So, it's about three weeks, maybe a little shy of three weeks, before all across this province, children and youth are going to return to school for yet another year of education. I remember back when I was in public school, Prince Charles in London, and what I remember most is that on the first day back in school, regardless of what grade I was in, it seemed to me that the teacher said, welcome back, boys and girls. I'd like you to talk about what you did on your summer holiday. <laughs> and every year, I sounded like a gospel evangelist because I told the same old, old story. I spent two weeks at my grandfather's cottage with my parents. And then the rest of the summer, I just hung around the neighborhood doing not much of anything. Year after year after year, that was my story, with one exception. And that exception was when I was 12 years old. My parents took my sister and I on a two-week vacation to Prince Edward Island. Well, this summer, I had a little bit more of an exciting experience than the ones I had in my school days. This summer, Ruth and I took a bus tour into the Saguenay region of northeastern Quebec. One of the stops that we made along the way was at the St. Felician Planetarium. And because of that stop, I had to think seriously about my image of God. What's more, as I thought about that, I found myself challenged to write about my thoughts and to preach about them. This morning, I'm sharing with you some of the insights that I gained as a result of my visit to the St. Felician Planetarium. The text is taken from Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I struggled with what I would say in this sermon, and I shared that struggle with one of my retired colleagues in ministry who has a much greater wisdom than I possess. He shared this story for me from his own experience. In one of the churches that I served, there was a little boy who regularly attended our services. The child was taught that it was in church that people heard what God had to say to them. One Sunday, I was preaching in a different church. When that little boy entered his church, he did not see me. It was later reported to me that he had wailed in anguish, Where's God? <laughs> you see, he thought I was God. Now, if you're four years old, and your parents tell you, you go to church to hear what God's to say, and there's some guy standing at the front talking, and you're listening. Don't you make the connection? We all have images of God. And most of us would say, those images of God were first planted within our consciousness by well-meaning parents and grandparents, preachers and Sunday school teachers. But some people arrive at their image of God through their readings, They're reading spiritual books, reading the Bible. Still others develop 
an image of God because they watched too many reruns of Charlton Heston portraying Moses in that classic Hollywood epic movie, The Ten Commandments. The people of the Bible did not always share what our image of God may be. Consider Abraham, first patriarch of the Israelite people. He knew God as El, and to give El a proper title, El of the Mountains. El lived in the high places. And if one wanted to converse with El, one had to climb up the mountain to where El was. Surely it was that concept that led many of our churches of the older style to have staircases that lead to the sanctuary. Because we believed, consciously or subconsciously, that one had to go up to meet God. By the time of Samuel and David, El had been transformed into Yahweh. And Yahweh lived in a box about the size of an old steamer trunk. In the box with Yahweh were the stone tablets on which the Ten Commandments had been inscribed. The people of Israel carried this trunk, this Ark of the Covenant, that they called it, they carried it wherever they went. So Yahweh became a portable God. If you moved from here to there, you took Yahweh with you. It was a good system that worked well until the day came when Israel's habitual enemy, the Philistines, captured the Ark of the Covenant and carted it away. All of a sudden, the people of Israel found them devoid of the presence of Yahweh. And chaos reigned within the nation until the ark was recovered. And then stability returned again. It was Solomon that came to the conclusion, enough of this. We need a permanent place in which Yahweh can live. Solomon built the temple in Jerusalem. And if people wanted to stand in Yahweh's presence, they were expected to travel to Jerusalem, no easy task in those days, and there in the temple, they would meet Yahweh. Jesus was the first one to give us the concept of God being a father in heaven. The gospel lesson today is the first reference in the gospel to Jesus calling God Father. People develop their image of God in many ways. They don't always find God in church which to a preacher is rather disconcerting. We like to think that God is here. Some people say, not for me. God's out there somewhere. God's in the woods. I find God when I look at the sunset. Or I find God when I marvel at the power of a thunderstorm. I find lots of things in church, but they don't find God. Time now to return to the St. Felician Planetarium, what this is really all about. The planetarium is located in the village of St. Felician, which is about an hour's drive from Chicoutimi, Quebec. 
on the shores of Lachesic Jung. The planetarium itself is located in what I believe to have been a former school. The sign that proclaims its presence is weather-beaten and run-down and almost illegible. The property around the planetarium is scruffy at best. Ruth and I both concluded that if we had been traveling on our own, we would not have been drawn into the planetarium by its outward appearance. We would have said, oh, that place looks like a dump, and off we go. Because we were on the bus tour, we had no choice. Once inside, my mind was blown away, and my faith was challenged by what I found. The planetarium is operated by two gentlemen that, as far as I can tell, are amateur astronomers. And they have three focal points for their hobby. The International Space Station, the Hubble Telescope, and the Mysteries of the Universe. At one point in our visit, we were taken inside a fabric dome that could easily accommodate 15 or 18 adults sitting on chairs like these. The lights were turned out. Then our host projected on the ceiling of the dome images of the universe. He started with our own cosmic home, Earth. And from Earth, he took us on a journey into our solar system. And from there, into our galaxy that we call the Milky Way. He shared with us that regardless of how big we may think the Milky Way is, it's just a speck in the universe. That there are untold thousands of galaxies, many of which are yet to be discovered. He taught us that the universe is constantly expanding. It's not fixed in size. It's constantly growing and pushing outward. He showed us images from the Hubble telescope that were 10,000 light years old. Now, to take you back to grade 11 physics, light now it reportedly it travels, it, it's sped up since I went to the high school. In high school, it was 186,000 miles per second. It's now at 270 some thousand miles per second. I'm no good at math, but you can do it if you want. Okay. 270,000 miles in one second times 60 seconds in one minute times 60 minutes in one hour times 24 hours in one day times 365 days in a year times 10,000, and that's how far away those images are in coming to Hubble. And the original image is untold, ages old. Hubble is truly looking into the past. He also shared with us that our own planet came into being because the universe caused yet another galaxy to be created, the Milky Way. And out of that Milky Way galaxy, there was a solar system created by the universe. And out of that solar system was a little piece of space rock that had no life on it. It was cold, lifeless, empty. And he said, the best guess now is that it was covered in water and that a speck of cosmic dust landed on that planet and triggered a reaction that led to the formation of life. I'm listening to this, 
And my mind is immediately going to these words of Scripture. In the beginning. Remember, these words were written five, six thousand years ago by what we would call unsophisticated people. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And from Psalm 19, the heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims its handiwork. As the words of our host, and as those words of Scripture and others in the Scriptures rattled around in my head, I started to reimagine God. I found myself asking, is, is God the universe? Is the universe God? These thoughts kept me awake at night. Because if they're true, then everything that I have come to believe about God is now up for question. And I was not comfortable with that notion. Ultimately, I came to the conclusion that no, God is not the universe, and the universe is not God. But God is at work in the universe. God is the force behind the universe. God is the power driving the universe. God gives the universe purpose and direction. But the universe is not God. What is your image of God? We all talk about God. But if you had to paint a picture, what would it look like? Perhaps your image of God is one that you share with Bill Keane, who made a name for himself by drawing that delightful comic strip, The Family Service. Bill Keane pictured God as a bearded old man peering over the edge of heaven, looking down on the goings-on of men and women, boys and girls, but particularly what was going on in the life of little Billy. Maybe that's your image of God. Maybe your image of God is rooted in nature. Maybe you do see God in that flower, or in that thunderstorm, or in that flash of light that we call a shooting star. Maybe, maybe you see God as a conundrum, a puzzle that cannot be solved. As much as you try to figure it out, you just can't get a handle on it. Maybe you see God as a mystery. A mystery that you try to understand, but can never quite get it. I've come to see God as a presence. God is a presence that is around me and a presence that is within me. This is a presence that I am not always aware of. Probably more times than not, I am not aware of that presence, even though I am a preacher and I'm supposed to be living a godly life. That would be misleading for me to suggest that every moment of every day, I'm aware of God's presence in my life because I'm not. But the presence is still there. And for me, it is in this presence that I ground my faith, 
It is in this presence that, that I live out my faith. It is in this presence that is both simultaneously within me and around me that I trust. It is this presence that for me is God. Amen. Thanks be to God.